All right, everybody. Yes, this is an Indian ornamental tarantula, and she is my favorite tarantula here at the zoo. I actually call her my baby because I love her so much because she is so cool. She's so beautiful to look at and something that we all really need to appreciate. So I'm going to let our camera crew get really close to her. I'm only going to open this up for a few seconds because for our policies, we don't really open these up for anybody, but I want to make sure that you all take a really close look at her. So if our camera crew can come a little bit closer, and this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for everybody to see. You can see her beautiful coloring. And so yeah, you are, gonna, you are able to watch this feed on two different Facebook pages. You can watch it on the El Paso Zoo page or on the El Paso Zoological Society page. So visit us on either one and give us your comments. Let us know if you like what we're doing for you during this time, bringing the zoo to you with our sofa safaris. And so look at her coloring. Now right now she's actually pretty calm. She's not moving, she's not trying to get out. So I'm not concerned right now, but if she were to try to get out, then she would be extremely fast. They are very fast tarantulas. They can move quickly around. And these are ambush predators. So when they do look for their prey, they're going to just go ahead and get on them. And how does a tarantula kill its prey? Well, what they do is they actually do have fangs at the bottom. I'm going to close this up and I can tell you a little bit more about them. So they do have fangs. You guys want to come over here and you can take a look at that. They do have fangs on the bottom of their body right there. You can see that. And that is at the front of their mouth. And those fangs, they would then bite into something and they could inject a venom into that would then paralyze their prey. And then they will inject some enzymes into their prey that will liquefy the insides and then they can suck out the insides of their prey. So a lot of people are afraid of tarantulas, a lot of people are afraid of spiders, and that is really something that we need to be afraid of? No, because a lot of people have actually compared the venom of a tarantula to something about that of a honeybee. Um, yes, it can be extremely painful, and you always have to look out for allergies. I always want to make sure I give that warning that if you're allergic to something, you know, you can always develop an allergy to something or already be allergic to it. So if you start getting any of those complications, if you get bitten by anything, always, of course, contact your, your healthcare professionals. But with the tarantula, you can see those fangs there. Now, I don't know if you all can see. It's going to be very difficult, but you can see some of the hairs coming off. Those are what are called urticating hairs. And urticating hairs are something that you are going to find on New World tarantulas. Something that you're going to find on this side of the earth, around South America where most tarantula species are found. You're not going to find those urticating hairs on this girl right here, on the Indian ornamental. The urticating hairs are something that the tarantula can actually shoot out from their abdomen to protect themselves. Those can be extremely irritating to the eyes, to the nasal passages, and even to the skin. And that's how they protect themselves. Now, old world tarantulas, like the Indian ornamental, you guys can go ahead and want to take a look at her. These are found in India. And these tarantulas don't have those hairs. So they're actually known to be a little bit more aggressive because they don't have that way of protecting themselves. So what are they going to rely on? They're going to rely on that very strong bite. And so they are known as being more aggressive. But this is actually an extremely popular tarantula, and it's understandable why. Look at her beautiful coloring. Look at how easily she can blend into the bark that you see here. Camouflage. She's protecting herself and also preparing herself to possibly catch some prey. Now, tarantulas, females can live for a very long time. Some have known to live definitely over 20, 25 years of age, and they can produce anywhere from 75 to 1,000 eggs. And so just within about two to three weeks of age, those, you know, any of those hatchlings could, will then go off on their own. What would a tarantula like this eat in the wild? She would eat insects, definitely, as Diana said. They're very good at controlling those populations of insects. They can also eat scorpions. They can eat centipedes. And in the wild, she would even be able to eat lizards and frogs, too. So here at the zoo, we don't feed her lizard we don't eat her frogs she eats a lot of different crickets you know gets a lot of crickets so if you want to um, continue to focus in on her i can actually go ahead and open her up one more time so y'all can take a really close look at our indian ornamental tarantula i've never given her a name maybe you guys want to suggest some names for us and message them to us on our our facebook pages and let us know what you guys think her name should be i go ahead and take a closer look at her 
at this beautiful, beautiful tarantula. And as you take one last glimpse at her, I'm going to go ahead and see so they can get a really close look at her. Yeah, she's very calm, not trying to get out. This is how you'll find them. So we do want to replicate something you, you would find in her natural environment, that tree bark, which she would be hiding out in. How can you know if it's a male or female? Um, that is a good question. <laughs> um, also, you know, a lot of ways you can just go by size. By size with them. So the female is going to be the larger of the two here um, with her. Um, definitely she, and also even the way, the length of time that they live. So as you start seeing them get a little bit older, you're going to start seeing them, hey, you know, the male actually, the males are known that after they mate, they won't live that much longer after that, and that's when the female can start living. You know, you're going to see her continue to live that very long life. Well, we're getting a lot of name suggestions uh -huh. here. We got Trace, that's the name of Shibby. <laughs> we got Rose, Ashanti, Tammy Ashanti. the Tarantula. Ashanti. Ashanti. I got Cami for camouflage and Cheeto. <laughs> Cheeto. Well, you know, um, we'll see if anybody has a... If we get a lot of the same name, and maybe we can name her, um, and or maybe we have to have a contest. You know, so. we've had contests on how to name our other animals, some of our larger exhibit animals, but never anything for a tarantula. And you know, a lot of people have never got to meet her, and if they have, they uh, are afraid of spiders, so they don't like to get close to her. So really, you know, this might be the closest that you ever get to one of these critters here. But also, this is a good invitation that when the zoo is back open, you know, we'll be having these animal ambassadors out for y'all to see. We also do have our yearly bug fest. We brought it back last year. Hopefully, we can have it this year, um, depending on what happens. But it's something that you can see these. And also, she comes out for boo at the zoo. And she is put on under special lighting where people can really see those colors pop. All right, so we are going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Lady Anna. So just a reminder, you know, get outdoors, explore. Safety first, don't let fear um, stop you. Spiders and insects are very vital to our uh, ecosystem. And if you do see a spider, the first thing is to be safe. Keep your distance, find out where you can put it. Watch out for extermination and poisons that are used for bugs because they affect bugs. That means they're gonna affect birds, they're gonna affect lizards. The whole pyramid, the whole circle of life gets affected by um, those kinds of treatments. So find things that are eco-friendly and learn more about it. You can learn more about it. We'll be posting things on our blog, opasozoo.home blog. We'll have some activities, some coloring pages, and we're gonna probably come up with a contest because we love those suggestions. So thanks for joining us. Remember at two o'clock today, we've got more coming to you and I think you're gonna love it. So stay tuned and thanks to our team. Remember, if you like being at the zoo, also contact Olivia at the El Paso Zoo Society. They need volunteers because when this is all over, we're gonna get out, we're gonna embrace, and we're going to uh, come to the zoo and the zoo, well now, the zoo goes to you. Thanks for joining us, we'll see you this afternoon.